Welcome at, welcome back everybody to our first best out of three for a fistful of tangos, the grand finals. If S4 loses this one, then Fear is the champion. If Fear wins this one, uh, or if S4 wins this one, then we go to a deciding best out of three because Fear has that winner's bracket advantage. I'm LD, I'm joined here by Luminous, and this has been long awaited. It's gonna be Puck versus Queen of Pain for the first best out of three. We gave the players three matchups, Queen of Pain versus Puck, Shadow Feed versus Viper, and Shadow Shaman versus Lashrak. They both banned, I believe it was Shadow Shaman versus Lashrak. We flipped a coin, we got Quap versus Puck. If we need that second best out of three, it will be Shadow Fiend versus Viper. So Lumi, we're gonna see S4 on the Puck on the Radiant side. I gotta say, this matchup can really go either way. Yeah, you cast a lot more of these uh, 1v1 than I have, so... Uh, <laughs> I'm basically going off knowledge I have in, in my own personal matchup, which means very little, but... I think this inherently favors Puck a tiny bit. It, but I'm not sure on that one. It sort of depends. I mean, it really comes down to those first few levels. Whoever gets the bottle first. Queen of Pain has the rune control advantage. One thing S4 loves to do just as a player in these 1v1 matchups, he always goes for the body block with the courier. Although against Queen of Pain, that's very dangerous because we actually... It doesn't work anymore. It got patched out. Oh, did it get patched? Got okay, I missed yeah. that. Um, but yeah, so yeah, we're not going to see, see that. He's very sadly blocking his own body now. But something Fear has been good about is scouting runes with his courier, and it looks like he's probably going to be doing that soon. Yep. S4, his creep blocks have been very solid over all this tournament, so let's see who gets the edge here. So far, it's pretty even. You really want to get that range creep in front, but S4 not quite able to do it. So so real fast before this um, match really goes underway, who's your money on? Fair with the 1-0 advantage? Uh, you gotta go with the old man. They actually played earlier. Now, what that was when the tournament started, it was a best out of one format. And there was no only mid mode, so I, I think it was kind of a bad matchup for S4, but Fear played really well anyway. And Fear has that winner's bracket advantage, so I gotta give him the edge. The old man still has what it takes. But S4, oh, the courier? <laughs> that courier is just going for some next path. Almost would have got snipe, and that could have just be it. And right now, S4, you can see that he's missing a lot of last hit under the tower. Fear had a better block, and the creep wave is slowly pushing in, which normally means it's good advantage for Puck, but he's missing all of his CSs right now. I do believe that Queen of Pain has a better animation. Yeah, uh, it's definitely better. But damage-wise, it's fairly similar. Yeah, and Fear has gone for a point Shadow Strike. This is still pretty good. Even if you just force the Puck to waste this phase shift, then you can trade blows favorably. And the reason S4 didn't go for the Courier there is he took phase shift at level 1, which you normally do against Queen of Pain, so you can just dodge those auto attacks and things like Shadow Strike. You're not going to go for a kill at level 1. Yep, definitely the case. So we're going to see a lot of last hitting, and I think this game is mostly going to determine right about level 4 or 5 once both players get this bottle. I want to see like the first big exchange of spells. I imagine the Shadow Strike will be left at level 1, and we're going to see uh, Screen Pain at 3, 4, and 5. Uh, but let's see if these players... I, I've seen it in, in past 1v1 games. Players get very creative with their skill builds and try to do something different. But I, I, I do believe the standard builds for both these heroes are, are probably the best builds. Yeah, Queen of Pain should be maxing that Scream next. You don't really want to level up Shadow Strike because, again, it is somewhat unreliable. Against other heroes, you would, but not against Puck. Fear's already got his bot on the way. s is a bit behind when it comes to CS. And he also went for a little bit more in terms of regen. And it looks like he got an extra branch as well. Uh, or not yep. in terms of regen, just an extra branch. So Fear's going to get his bottle first. And now he can really start to get aggressive. <laughs> yeah, the CS is pretty much, uh, actually, it's, uh, exactly even a 7 5 piece. And uh, I wonder if Bro Player is going to be. I'm not sure uh, how how what the rules is, but is bottle crow uh, bottle crow bottle allowed? crow is not allowed in this particular tournament. You're not allowed to. I see. There's a couple rules. You can't bottle crow. You can't use a soul ring. You cannot use. Or you cannot interact with the neutrals really in any way. So you can't take them over. You can't farm them. Uh, and th those are the rules we stuck with. So we're trying to keep them consistent the whole way through. The way the best out of three works is if. Uh, after game one, the players swap sides in the matchup. If it goes to a game three, they play 1v1 Shadow Feed mid, which will now involve items. It used to just be no items to make it fair. Uh, so it should be before you were able to spawn two of the same here in a single game. So it should be pretty interesting. Yep, and here we go. Looks like Fear is still having that lead, but the, here's the thing. The Queen of Pain, once she gets to level five, that Screen of Pain gets a lot more potent. And if S4 is slow on that trigger, for that face shift, he's gonna take a lot of damage. Looks like we do have an upgrade into a no talisman as well, something that we don't generally see in these kind of 1v1 matchup, but that does give you a lot of damage to work with. Yeah, no talisman is really good in 1v1. It just allows you to dominate your lane. We see Mushi go for it all the time in his 1v1 matchup. Nice uh, face shift dodge there, and Fear going for the screen, going for the harass. S4 should have his bottle next, and starting with a set of tangos and sal. Oh, S4. Look at these dodges. 
pretty it's clutch. It's just right on point. But here's the thing, though. With the ring control on Fierce uh, Advantage, because Scream of Pain is a lot more spammable with the blink available to a lot more spammable in that, uh, in that sense as well. He's going to be picking up the Invis rune, and look at him. He's waiting for the next rune as well. If you get something like Invis and a double damage, things could get very, very scary. He's going to check, and it's, no luck, no top. cigar. It's top. What is it going to be top? It's a haste rune. That's a big rune for Queen of Pain. And S4 doesn't know what rune fear has, so generally you got to be pretty careful. He is level 5. He's got that slight level advantage because Fierce waited bottom for the double spawn. Going to bait out that's what, baiting out the baiting out that phase shift. Then you can go for the Shadow Strike if you want. He hasn't actually gone for the top rune yet because he doesn't want to miss a lot of experience. He should be spamming the wave and then going for it. And if S4 yep. tries to go, he could easily die, so he's got to be careful. Yeah, S4 is really disadvantaged now with two runes going with Queen of Pain. And sure, she's missing some EXP here and there, but she's getting most of the last hits. You can see the last hits very, very close. Slight favor in the Puck, but Puck's been staying in the lane for a lot longer and not having that rune. But on the same notice, that sure, these runes are, are nice for Queen of Pain and all, but... I mean, Puck is okay with that bottle. He's It's still relatively full. It's very hard to kill the Puck in this matchup, and Queen of Pain can tower dive most heroes with a rune. Puck, you can't, because if you get Dream Quote silenced under tower, you can easily drop. And it's a matchup where generally if the Queen of Pain overextends, she loses it. So Fear really has to bide his time. We saw in the Sing Sing match versus Merlini, Sing Sing just kind of slow sieged it. He didn't even take, po he took a bunch of points and stats, never leveled up Shadow Strike. I think he didn't even level up Blink for most of the game. And he just kind of slowly but surely wore the puck down, built a Necro Book, started working on his tower. I don't know if we'll see Fear go for that build. He hasn't yet, but uh, you can kind of win that war of attrition versus a puck. Because if you get tanky, oh, here we go. S4 has not, doesn't have the phase shift available. Fear's going for the first blood. S4 dream coils and turns it around. Phase shift dodge. Whoa, buddy. He used that phase shift and baited Fear in, but it just got ready in the nick of time. Is he gonna die too? No, he had to actually use the bottle and phase shift away the poison tick. Wow, that's some play. Of course, phase shift does have a six second cooldown. As soon as S4 used it, that was Q for the Queen of Pain to go, but it came down in the middle of the fight. And in those kind of 1v1 man fights, or I guess women fights in these, in this case, the first one to actually start to run away is the one that actually loses. And Queen of Pain blinked away the Dream Core on top, and Puck now would have a guess on that rune, and he's gonna guess correctly. Illusion rune's gonna save him a trip back, and now all the advantage in the world of S4. Yeah, Fear, this is what happens when you go to check that bottom rune, you wait for a double spawn. He would have been level 6 otherwise, especially along with the, the denies from S4. He's got 10. It was just enough to keep Fear below level 6, and once Puck is this kind of a lead, it gets really tough. That orb hurts a lot. You can't kill the puck anymore. When the dream closes down, he can go for another kill. This is one of those very volatile matchups. Fear can come back, but it's so freaking hard to do at this point. Look at the net worth. Puck's almost 800 gold ahead. And of course, the path of victory for the Fistful of Tangle is two kills or two tower kills. Is that correct? That's correct. So right now, S4 needs one more kill. <laughs> Both players need two more towers. You can win either way. Whoever gets any of those first wins. Yep, and Pug is doing a fairly good job now. We'll be activating that Illusion Rune. The Illusion Rune obviously could provide a lot more DPS in the in the actual fight itself, in the last sitting stage. But also, you could actually be using it to check uh, for runes and, and whatnot as well. So we'll see if S4 will be doing that in just a bit. There you go, sending that Illusion off. And what's Queen of Pain really going to do about it? She can't do anything about it. Yeah, he fear actually went for the early wards, which is something he's used very successfully in his 1v1s, but... He's always gotten first blood. I don't think I've ever seen him actually die in this entire tournament. At least not first. He always got the kill first. This game he doesn't, and with those early observers are great when you're ahead, but when you're behind, doesn't necessarily help you that much. The rune's still a little bit away, about 20 seconds or so. And yep. just back to farming now. Now, in terms of this game's been looks like it's gonna be dragging out a bit longer. So what do you assume the item bill for these two heroes would be? It's hard to say. I, I, phase boots on Puck is really popular in 5v5 play and like the Southeast Asian scene. Arcane boots are popular in some games where you want a five man. In this game, power treads is general oh, S4 goes in. If that orbit hit, he would have gone for the kill there. And, and did not S4 hit. Sees a haste rune up on top, and this could be very, very dangerous with the haste rune as well as the orb. The Queen of Pain may have a blink, but there's also silence and dream code to keep them in place. So it's up to S4 to find a very, very good kind of uh, fight away from tower aggro. I don't, I don't think uh, Puck could take a fight under a tower though. Yeah, he can't unless he has creeps, and that's actually one of the interesting things we saw in the Sing Sing Merlini matchup was a lot of. Uh, stat, you know, some of those R items. We saw early rain and Basilius, I think on both players. I think Sing Sing got it first, then Merlini was kind of forced to retaliate. And that allows you to have the creep by pushing a little bit easier so you can dive with the creeps. 
but neither player is going for that yet. Yep. And we have um, power I, treads. Earlier, up. back to the Sing Sing build that you were talking about, I actually like that build quite a bit. I feel like the second point in Blink gets rather unnecessary. I mean, these fights do last quite a bit, but you need three extra levels. Oh, it looks like he's gonna make a go right now. The Blink's gonna get canceled. Hastrin gets pop here, and Fear is so no. low, and he's gonna go down. Wow. GG. That's a number one. S4 takes this one, and we're gonna go to game number two as the heroes swap, or the player swap heroes. Yeah, let's see what S4 can do on the Queen of Pain side. Takes the game one. Really impressive performance from him. Just you see how those tiny little advantages always add up. It's the beauty of 1v1, guys. But stay tuned. Game two is coming up next.